I'd like to kick off this morning with this incredible story about Sadiq Khan uh, and the incredible racism that clearly persists inside of his inner circle, uh, inside of um, uh, the London mayor's office. On his own website, they carry a picture of a white family and they say they're not representative of London. I mean, can you believe that? No, well, unfortunately, I can believe it. That's the great shame here. And heads need to roll over this. Uh, this should be a catalyst for change at City Hall because, you know, many people do believe that Sadiq Khan is racist against white people. And it's stories like this that actually just reinforce that belief. And, you know, with quite good reason. You know, whether you want to call it racism or anti-white prejudice, there's something deeply wrong with the, the mayor of London's office where diversity now is just a code word meaning non-white. I mean, you'll see photographs now where everybody is either all Asian or all black, and they celebrate that for being diversity. That's not diversity at all. It's just replacing white people with another ethnicity. And just imagine if Khan's office had actually said this about black people, if they had labelled a photograph of a black family as being unrepresentative of real Londoners in favour of one of, say, white people. There'd be an uproar over mm. that. There'd be an inquiry. Uh, Keir Starmer wouldn't have waited more than five minutes yeah. before, before suspending uh, Sadiq Khan from that. This is grossly offensive, not only to living white people, but also to the generations of white people uh, who, who made London the greatest city in the world. Let's make no mistake about it. London has been overwhelmingly white for over 2,000 years. As late as 1961, it was 98% white. 2001, it was about 60% white still. Now, today, white British are only about 37% of the population of London, but they are still the single largest ethnic group. And if we take all white people, whether they're British or not, London is still majority white. 53% mm. of Londoners are white, uh, compared to, I forget what it is now, but it's for 13% who are black. So yeah. four times more people uh, are white than are black. So, so the, the world, white, so the white, white people, not presumably, yeah, presumably the white people above the thirty-eight percent figure are from other countries. You know, because London has always been a magnet for immigration, like most cities and like most cities in the country, it tends to have a more ethnic makeup than the rest of the country. Because if you travel yourself uh, like thirty miles away from London uh, into the darkest Kent, uh, into you know the wilds of Sussex, into in Dorset, Cornwall, you know, it's a very white place. Mostly Britain is a white country, uh, something like 80-odd percent white. So for Sadiq Khan uh, to use this narrative and to encourage this narrative would suggest that not only is he wrong about London, he's wrong about Britain, and he's wrong uh, to even highlight different people's race. He also, on his Twitter account over the weekend, was busy celebrating Black Pride um, and also celebrating another festival that he wants to hold in the middle of Trafalgar Square, uh, which is sort of Black Culture Week or something, you know. But even if you and I were to say, "Can we have a White Culture Week?" you'd be designed, you'd be, you'd be decried as some kind of sup white supremacist. Yeah, well, it reminds me of when Ken Livingstone was mayor and he gave funds for a St Patrick's Day parade, but refused to have one for St George's Day parade because it was racist. Yeah, this in London, the capital of England, you right. know. But this whole episode, you're quite right, it just this and the black on the square, everything just reveals how utterly rotten and divisive, you know, uh, the mayor, Khan's mayoralty is yeah, right now. Right. It's absolutely steeped in all of this. It's bias, it's prejudice, and it's these, you know, it's pursuing divisive agendas like this. And the thing that gets me is that Khan is always accusing people on the right of stoking the culture yes. war. When actually, he's the grand poobah of, poli of the <laughs> politics of hatred and division. Yes. Instead, it was just last week, if you remember, he sent out an equally outrageous tweet directly blaming right-wing culture wars on that horrendous homophobic stabbing yes. in, in Clapham. And I pointed out at the time that the right London isn't because of the culture wars, it's because of mass immigration from Africa, Asia and the Middle East, where they're rapidly homophobic cultures in, in, many, of the, in many of those regions. And as soon as the image of the black suspect of the Clapham stabbing was released, Suddenly, Sadiq Khan and all the do-gooders went absolutely silent. Yes, it's funny. We that, haven't isn't it? heard a peep from them since then. But if you know, you know if it was a white person, yeah. there would be a furore and a yeah. frenzy of posts. Well, this is the great irony, isn't it, of, of Sadiq Khan championing the cause of, of migration 
but many of those people coming here come from, as you say, countries where not only is homosexuality outlawed, uh, but you get killed for it uh, in some cases, or certainly imprisoned. Um, you've also got, you know, incredible misogyny coming in. Uh, we're importing from various countries where women are not equal to men, uh, which is one of the reasons, presumably, why we see so many men coming over on the small boats because they don't bring the women with them, we're told, because they're more likely to face persecution, so they leave the women behind. I mean, it's an incredible kind of ridiculous and, and nonsensical position for Sadiq Khan to hold. And he's now revealed himself to be no better than your average racist, hasn't he? Oh, absolutely, and it's probably quite fitting in a way because London has become now the most intolerant region of the country. Mm. You know, London used to be the most tolerant place. You know, young gay men would come to London for that security and to be themselves where they couldn't be in, in their little hometowns and yeah. so forth. But as you say, homophobia, uh, misogyny, anti-Semitism, the strongest concentration of all that, all the recent polls have shown, is actually in London. Yeah. Uh, well, who you know, can we... forget those guys waving the ISIS flags driving down Finchley Road, you know, uh, in, and living, uh, driving by Jewish areas, threatening to rape Jewish women, you know, on a loud hailer. Yeah, yeah you're absolutely right. And, you know, this, what, what's happening now? You remember recently when, when Sadiq Khan said that London was built by migrants. Yeah. It was utter rubbish. St Paul's Cathedral, the Houses of Parliament, Buckingham, were not built by migrants. No. That's an insult to the generations who built this great city. But what he's trying to do with all of this is he's trying to create a new foundation myth, you know? Mm. All cultures, all civilizations have these foundation myths people used to get inspired by. London was supposed to have been founded by Brutus of Troy after defeating Gog and Magog. But now there's this new equally ludicrous myth that Sadiq Khan is creating for London that has always been a multicultural city. It's always been, it's thanks to immigrants that everything that London has was created and founded. It's all stuff and nonsense. Yeah. And it's dangerous stuff because it's, the, it's stoking the politics of division and is alienating and aggravating and irritating uh, decent white people. And yeah. that's how you get... Well, it's funny, isn't it? Because if, if, if you followed the logic of his argument, he would then suggest, presumably, that the Industrial Revolution was invented by immigrants. And you'd go, in that case, why didn't they stay in their own countries and do it there? Oh, no, it started in Britain. There we are. Yeah, because Britain happened to be, at that particular moment in time, industrially the most advanced nation on the planet. You know, there's nothing to be ashamed of, uh, but they would like, on the one hand, to say that they started everything that was good in Britain um, and then ended everything that was bad, because Britain actually exported bad things and imported good things. The whole thing is a nonsense.